Let's start by briefly talking about vector graphics and the anatomy of a vector. So essentially vector graphics is an alternative to raster graphics and uh, each of them has uh, special advantages and disadvantages. It all depends on the situation and it's all down to what is the end use of your illustration. In this uh, beginner's uh, class, what you need to know about vectors and vector graphics is that vectors consist of coordinates with lines and curves in between them. Let's have a look, for example, at this flower. It's all vector. If I go, for example, to the leaves, and then on the left side, I click on the node tool, you will see that this entire shape is vector. This whole shape is a curve which is basically a line or a path. And it has those little points, which are called nodes. So this entire leaf shape is called a curve. The same for the flowers here, it's also a curve shape. Also over here, you have one example more. It's an illustration. It's actually a pattern that I created. This entire pattern is vector as well. So if we go to the master file and we open the pattern, We will see, for example, that this star here, it's all a vector. Now, one advantage that you hear a lot when talking about vectors is that they are really ideal for printing because when you zoom in really, really close, let's take this guy, for example, you will not see any pixelation or um, rough edges. So you can zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and everything will be smooth anyway. Let's zoom out. So with this regard, vector art is really ideal for printing because this could be the size of a small business card and it's going to print in the same way as a very, very big billboard, for example. It's going to keep the same super crisp quality. Now let's quickly go to a raster program and let's uh, have a look at the exact same pattern, but as a raster file. Heading to Procreate. This is exactly the same pattern, but this time it's in a raster program and it's been saved as a JPEG. This time when we zoom in, we will see that it's a raster illustration. It's composed of those small um, elements, pixels. And that will mean that the more we zoom in, the more blurry our, our illustration is going to get. So it's gonna pixelate quite excessively when we enlarge it. So one constraint of a raster-based illustration is that we really have to be careful when thinking about the size of our canvas. Normally I create my raster illustrations on a canvas of at least uh, 3000 or 4000 pixels square. Whereas if we go back to Affinity, here you don't really have to worry about it that much because when you want to export that pattern, you go to the menu over here in the upper left corner, you click on export, and then you see that you have a lot of options to choose from. From the entire area, I can choose my pattern, which I named as my pattern. And then I can choose from a variety of those files here. For example, if I want a PNG, the original size was 4,000 pixels, but I can still change it to say, let's do 8,000 pixels square. So the bigger the dimensions, the bigger the, the end file size, you will see the size over here. And now we can share it to Procreate, for example, to have a look if, it's, if, anything, has, if anything has changed, if it's uh, pixelated or not, just to show you. Okay, it's been exported to Procreate. Let's have a look. Importing the file from Affinity. And this is the pattern that we just exported from Affinity. So everything is crisp and everything is in the dimensions that we wanted. Let's have a look. Go to Canvas, Canvas Information and Procreate and then to Dimensions and you will see it's 8000 by 8000 pixels. Even though, let's go back, this original canvas here was 4000 by 4000 pixels. So it's a huge advantage because I can just create a pattern even on a canvas of say 2000 square and say I don't have an end client in mind, but someone finds 
my pattern and wants to buy it for licensing and we uh, strike a deal and then maybe they want a file of uh, just from the top of my head 10,000 by 10,000 pixels. Uh, then it's very easy, like I said, you can go to the export option and you can choose the file type that you want and you can export it in the dimension that you want. So this is the huge advantage that Vector Graphics has over Raster Graphics. One last thing that you might want to know is that Vector Graphics is uh, commonly found in a variety of file formats. Um, in general, the most typical file format for vector files is SVG, which stands for uh, Scalable Vector Graphics. But some other commonly found formats for vectors are EPS or PDF or AI from Adobe Illustrator. You can also see those files when you click on export. You can also see those file types. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the most common one for vectors, SVG. And oftentimes we also are asked for uh, an EPS file or a PDF file. And that's all that you have to know about vector graphics for starters.